At Paracas, we have the Candelabro, which is a geoglyph 500 feet tall. And then in Palpa, more than a thousand small geoglyphs created by the Paracas culture. And finally, Nazca, where we have predominantly Nazca figures, but also older Paracas culture figures as well. And the ancient Pukio well system, which has been partially restored. And also Kahuachi, one of the largest adobe ceremonial cities on the planet. Once again, we're in the area of Pisco on the coast of Peru. And those five photos that you just saw show you how complex the so-called Nazca system of lines and geoglyphs are. The first one, <coughs> called the Candelabro or Candelabra, is about a 20-minute drive off in that direction there. And then another three-hour drive from there and you get to the area called Palpa. And Palpa is where there are approximately 1,600 small geoglyphs on the sides of hills and mountains and on the tops of flat mountains that some people think were cut off by an ancient machine or <clears throat> lost ancient high technology or something, but that's actually not true. That's their natural formations like that. And then another one hour drive and you get to Nazca proper and that's where you see the, the famous Nazca geoglyphs and lines that most people think of. So in fact, the whole system goes from here in this area, 190 kilometers to Nazca itself, <clears throat> with Palpa being the location that has the most of the geoglyphs. Again, most of them are quite small, and that's also where you find the so-called runways as well. Then in the other pictures, we have the Pukio wells. They are ancient. They are a way that either the Nazca or possibly the earlier Paracas people were able to access underground water channels. Some have been restored now. There used to be many more of them, but they were abandoned when the Spanish arrived in the area. And then the final picture was of Kahuachi, which is one of the largest adobe uh, ceremonial pyramid sites on the planet. It's located relatively close to uh, the city of Nazca itself. It's approximately 18 kilometers away. So most people just think that Nazca is the Nazca Plain area, but it, as you can see from the photos and what I'm saying, it's much, much more complex than that. And recently, thanks to artificial intelligence, uh, they found about 130 of the Nazca, um, Nazca or Paracas culture geoglyphs in the area, I think, in between Palpa and Nazca. And so, who knows, with the use of um, drones and quadcopters and things like that, maybe many, many more will be revealed. Um, it's highly, highly likely that many have not been seen for a long period of time due to being damaged possibly by water or being covered up over the course of time by blowing sand and things like that. And as well, the way they were made is not that complicated. Some people think that they're almost like laser etched or something like that. It's quite simple because you had two ancient phenomena going on in the area. You have uh, where the ocean floor actually has been uplifted and then also a lot of volcanic activity. So it's the volcanic activity that covered over areas of where the, the ocean floor was raised and by removing the volcanic debris and uh, scratching into the surface only about that much into the ground, that's what created 
the Nazca and Palpa lines and geoglyphs. The candelabro, which again is over in that direction, 500 feet in length, it's actually about a foot deep. It was carved into not simply the sand, but salt encrusted, very dense, sandy and rocky material. And so that's why it can be seen for many, many miles um, off on the ocean or from the, from the air and can only be seen. And it basically faces north. So just a little update about uh, some facts and, and uh, other things about the Nazca system and how extensive it is. I do have a, a book about Nazca at Amazon.com. So this is Brian Forrester from Pisco in Peru, thanking you for watching.